Apple came out with their uh, one more thing final event of the year 2020. Yahoo Finance's Dan Halley joins us now to tell us uh, all about the latest MacBooks and really, Halley, what has been the year of the Mac for Apple and uh, a shift I don't think the company probably foresaw when we began the year. But I know the changes that the company announced yesterday are something that uh, you see as, as a significant turning point here, a significant event for the business going forward. Yeah, this is really a major deal. You know, we talk about how uh, 2020 is supposed to see this iPhone sales super cycle because of the 5G iPhone, the iPhone 12. Uh, there's four iPhone 12, so obviously that can help drive sales uh, more. But, you know, the, the most dramatic product that they've announced is clearly this new piece of silicon. Uh, it's called the M1 chip. Uh, it's a system on a chip. And basically all that means is the central processing unit, the CPU or the processor that everyone normally talks about, uh, and the graphics processing unit, which is basically you know a graphics chip, are on one piece of silicon. Uh, and you know they have their neural engine in there for machine learning. Uh, this is the same thing that they've been doing in the iPhone and the iPad for years now. Uh, but what's big here is Apple is making a huge, hugely massive bet that they can turn those chips uh, in a similar style to power the devices that you know require heavy duty processing. We're talking about uh, the MacBook Pro. Uh, the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, those are the devices that are getting this M1 chip. And why that matters is because they're ditching Intel entirely uh, by 2022. And we've seen other companies try to work with ARM-based processors to power laptops. And yes, they've gotten great battery life. And Apple's already touting that, uh, saying you can get as uh, much as 18 hours or 20 hours uh, out of the Air and the uh, Pro. But what they haven't been able to do, these other manufacturers, uh, HP, Microsoft, is make those ARM-based processors powerful enough to take advantage of what you know high-end users may need. And when we look at something like a MacBook Pro, uh, a lot of people use them for things like video editing or heavy graphics uh, applications. That's not something we've traditionally seen with these ARM-based processors. So Apple is really taking a big bet here. They say that these chips blow out uh, current Intel chips by a country mile. We're talking about things like uh, you know, CPU performance, GPU performance, the aforementioned battery, uh, your Mac, uh, iP uh, sorry, MacBook Air won't have a fan in it now. So you won't hear that annoying wheezing uh, whenever you're trying to watch Netflix for five hours while running one tab in Chrome because Chrome is terrible like that. But uh, the big to do here is that Apple is making a huge, huge, huge bet on these chips. And I think if it pays off, obviously they have to, they eliminate that payment they have to make to the likes of Intel, $2.9 billion in 2019. Uh, but it also uh, allows them to further customize Mac OS uh, throughout the line just because they're going to have the hardware and software. And then, oh, yeah, that also means that all of the apps from iOS and iPad OS can translate directly to Mac OS. And that would mean millions mm -hmm. upon millions of apps entering into that ecosystem and giving people an even greater reason to buy these devices. So I think the M1 is just a massive, massive opportunity for them, yep. but also a huge, huge risk. All right, Dan Halley, uh, one word uh, answer. Buyer's guide question here, holiday shopping. Is this MacBook worth getting? I would say probably, yeah. <laughs>